everyone, it's Kendo here, and this is single-handedly the most requested video I've ever gotten to review a makeup product. If you don't follow K-Beauty or live under a rock, uh, Innisfree is the first Korean brand to come out with a pretty decent range, shade range for their cushion foundations, concealers, and also their powders. Um, I did not get my hands on the pressed powder because wasn't interested but I did get my hands on both formulas of their cushions and also on the concealer so we're gonna see how things go today this is basically a first impression I did open one of them to just see how to construct the cushion but I haven't really gotten a chance to fully swatch it I did tap it on my hand but the other one I haven't even touched at all so like I said before I got two foundations one of them is the Innisfree matte full cover cushion I got mine in shade W 37 golden tan this has a full spectrum SPF 50 plus so I'm curious how this will actually look on camera because a lot of times sunscreen tends to flash back and makes me look very very ghastly pale so we shall see and then the second cushion is the aquafit cushion broad spectrum spf 40 and this is also in 37 golden tan if you're not familiar with how innisfree does their cushions and that's why i'm so happy this is happening because i always thought it was so cool but i could never buy any of the freaking cushions because i'm brown innisfree cushions tend to be sold in parts so you will buy the cushion refill you will buy the actual compact and then you'll buy the puff and when you buy those all together it comes out to somewhere around $25 so the foundation is $25 this can be a little confusing for some people because I remember at first I was like why would you do that but when you think about it it's actually kind of cool because if you run out of the foundation itself you can refill the foundation by itself without buying the compact and extra pads and stuff that you don't need and the foundation by itself I believe is 11 or $12 also if you love little stuff like this and it's free has a billion and a half different compacts different designs that you can have for your foundation so if you want a very like personalized version you can get your own favorite design on your compact and also you'll know which one is yours so the case that I got for this one I believe this polka dot case is kind of like a like a gray brown case with white dots this one is number 46 so that's adorable and that's the one that I'm using for my matte case and then let me show you really quick how you can construct it so so we're gonna take another empty uh, carton carton cushion case it says on the pack so this is what the cushion case will come in it'll come in in a box and you'll see the design of the cushion on the front and there you have it that's your cushion and on the back you'll notice that there's a hole and your mirror is on the inside next you have the actual cushion if you open the package it comes like this and all you got to do is take your cushion align it up and press down until it snaps. And there you have it. There'll still be a little bit of a lip and that's completely fine. That's where you will put your cushion pad. After your case is all constructed, you can just use one of the pads, which you would also buy separately. They have different kinds, but I just decided to opt for the uh, Air Magic Puff. And that's what she looks like. Put that in there and Bam, you have your makeup on the go. I've always been very attracted to the convenience of a cushion. If you're traveling, if you're in a taxi, if you're in a car and you gotta do your makeup really quickly for whatever reason, this is very, very convenient. But cushion foundations, cushion BB cream, CC creams, what have you, even American adaptations of Korean cushions and what have you, have the terrible rep of having just horrible, horrid <laughs> shade ranges. So when Innisfree was like, we're coming out with 14 shades, which is a lot more than even American uh, companies do a lot of times, I was very, very proud. Also, they did it in both of their finishes, Aqua Fit, which is more of a dewy finish, and the matte come and the shades have been expanded for 14 shades. I also got the Innisfree matte full cover concealer. Um, I decided to get mine in number 33 chestnut and I must say before I even get onto any of these, I unfortunately don't have an Innisfree uh, road shop in my area so I had to buy everything online so I was very concerned that the colors would be terrible. Um, I lucked out because usually my rule of thumb is to pick the second to darkest color for foundation. Uh, drugstore foundations usually that tends to work pretty safely for me which is just appalling because I sh again should not be the second to darkest person but considering this is a Korean brand I'll give it a pass because they they're breaking new ground they're doing new things I appreciate it. And for the concealer I decided to go lighter but whatever the closest yellow shade was um, that was number 33 chestnut. This is because I'm gonna be using this under my eyes and I was also very concerned that the cushion might laughably be too dark. Again, I haven't really swatched things very well so I can't really say. I have swatched the matte one on my hand but I haven't really used it on my face yet. All right, let's get into the demo. Start off with one, the one that I already swatched which was the matte 
full cover cushion. Again, I'm in W37 Golden Tan, and if you can look in the cushion, cushions generally tend to be quite dark in the pan. Um, and because of that, it can be quite hard to pick a color if you can't touch it and swatch it. That's why I was very, very concerned. And I haven't really tested this on my face yet, so we're gonna see how things go. Um, <laughs> ooh. Okay, so the cushion itself is quite stiff, which is not expected because cushions tend to be kind of flimsy, at least the ones that I've tried, but again, haven't tried that many. It seems as though this one's really like packed with product. Okay, the color isn't terrible. Okay, yay. It's actually more of a, a cream than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a little bit more liquidy, um, but it's quite creamy in there, and maybe that's why everything feels a little more stiff than I was expecting. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just something to keep in mind. Also, if you can see, it's like bunching onto my skincare and having a little trouble blending. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm getting a little bit of blotchiness, which was not expected. Um, mm -hmm. um, coverage wise, I wouldn't call this full coverage, at least not without some building. I would definitely say this is very much so medium, maybe medium to full. Also, it has a scent. It smells like skincare, like very herbal. It smells like serum, like nice serum, expensive serum, but serum nonetheless. I don't know why I'm just finding this exceptionally hard to blend. And I wanna use the puff because in theory, if you were using this, you'd be out and about anyway, or trying to speedily get ready. And you know, you would have this with you or something similar with you. Oh God, this is not sitting on my skin well at all. Oh my God. Actually, hold on, let me zoom you in so you can see. This looks really bad actually. It's leaving like a mark going all the way up and it's so hard to blend it out. Like, it won't blend out. Also, it's like flaking on my, ah, oh, you can't see it. Okay, oh, there it is. Do you guys see that? It's like a like a line. Also on the side of my nose, it looks really cakey. Ooh, that looks bad. Wow, okay. Like, do you see, I don't know if you can see, but like no matter how I like press on it, that line is still there. And I'm well moisturized. Oh, it looks terrible under my eyes too. Oh no, I really wanted to like this. This looks really bad. Like it's actually flaking down to my neck. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it looks really bad. So as you guys know, I always do a pretty heavy amount of skincare prior to doing any foundations and stuff like that. Um, that was no different today. Um, I knew that one of these were gonna be exceptionally dry because it's a matte foundation, or I expected it to be, but I've never had any matte foundation do this on my skin. I haven't had Fenty do this on my skin. I haven't had like uh, drugstore foundations do this on my skin. I have, like none of these like typically matte foundations have ever done this to my face before. And it's like, mm. I'm a little disappointed because you can't quite see what I'm talking about on camera, but just know it looks so bad. This mirror is good though. This is a good size mirror. Do you see my eyelid? Like, <laughs> bruh, bruh, this is, this is, this is terrible. I'm gonna try to like press it in more, but then it just rubs off because it cakes up really poorly on my skin. I don't know if, I, like I kinda wanna like take my face off and like try it again. So I tried it again. Uh, use the Benton Snail Bee Line. I know this is a very, very thin moisturizer and toner. I only use these two things. I wash my face off really, really well and then I use these two because I know that this is kind of my go-to for finicky foundation. Some foundations act a little weird when I use too much skincare, but this one really, I've never had a foundation do that before. That was really, really weird. Um, but this time the finish is a lot more smooth. As far as coverage, this is in no way full coverage, at least with my first layer here. Um, I'm afraid to layer it on top of itself because that was like, that was some serious stuff there a second ago, but let's try, we'll try to build it up, to see if we can get to full coverage. Right now we're at like a, barely at a medium, like a light medium. Okay, so that covered up freckles and I think that's at a, still not at a full coverage though. A little bit of a higher medium than it was before. But yeah, not bad. 
Let's zoom you in so you can get all up in my area and see how things are looking. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is that this is not a matte finish. This is like a satin finish, maybe demi matte, um, but I definitely don't consider this matte, nor do I consider it full coverage. So those claims are not particularly correct. But, but I will say that this looks good. It looks definitely better than the first application. That was terrible. That might have been my bad though, so I'm not gonna go off on the foundation. So far, this looks okay. This is definitely a foundation that will have to be set though, at least for me, which is fine. It's whatever, I'll set it later. Okay, so I'm gonna leave this side of my face alone and we're gonna move over into the aqua cushion. So the aqua cushion is intended to be a lot more dewy than the matte one. I'm also a little bit lighter in coverage. So this one I don't expect to give me a whole lot of bam. You know what I mean? It's supposed to be pretty natural and sheer. Here we are again with the cushion. Put some, whoa, I might've put way too much on that cushion, but we'll, we'll wing it. Okay, immediately this has a really nice cooling sensation. And if you live in like a warm climate, this would be really, really nice. Oh, I had an eye boogie. Oh, that's glamorous. Okay, so the matte side is definitely more of a cream. This one's giving me a lot more of just like a liquid foundation in a cushion. It spreads better on the face. Definitely way more sheer. I don't know if you can see that on camera. On camera, I'm liking this side better, but on person, I'm feeling this side a whole lot. For review purposes, I'll keep everything separate, but probably in real life, what I would do is wear this one, the aqua cushion all over, and then use the other cushion in very specific spots, but. So that's what we look like after one layer. I'm gonna do one more pretty thin layer all over on this side as well. But let me zoom you into the biznaz real quick. So this is how we're looking. This is very, very dewy. Still not like full coverage, but this one doesn't market itself to be full coverage, so I'm cool with that. This is dewy. This is really dewy, really shiny. I'm digging it. So comparison, more full coverage, a lot less glow, more natural, way more glow. To be honest, whichever one you like will be up to you depending on what your preferences and your needs are, but this is the way we're looking so far. We're gonna try out the concealer. This is the Innisfree Matte Full Cover Concealer. I got mine in the color uh, W33 Chestnut. I saw this package and I was like, oh crap, <laughs> that's, that's too late. But when you actually squeeze it onto your hand, that's a pretty doable color. We're gonna use this a little bit under the eyes and see if it can cover up some of the, the bags and the lack of sleep. Consistency wise, it's very, very creamy, but not matte. Why, I, I'm so confused by the use of the word matte in some of these because the, I would consider this satiny. This is definitely not matte. Color wise, that's pretty good. That's really nice actually. Um, very natural looking and considering both of these foundations aren't particularly high glam looks, um, I'm not mad at it. As far as coverage goes though, this is very, 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 very light. Almost to the point that it's pointless. <laughs> like, as you can see, the color is slightly different. So this one is a little bit more gray and this one a little bit more yellow, but actually covering up of my under eye circles, I've been spoiled. I really like the Tarte Shape Tape and so I expect things to cover very, very thoroughly and this is not doing that for me. But you know what, if, again, if this is supposed to be like a natural chill day, then maybe this is okay. I This texture is a little off-putting though. It's very, very, uh, almost balmy. So it's kind of nice for under the eye, but I would imagine if you're putting this on top of like blemishes that would be a little bit maybe off-putting also I'm ha I have a fear of this even staying where I want it to stay because it has that kind of almost I don't want to say greasy it's not quite greasy but it's, it is like greasy I can't I can't think of another name for it I don't know it feels moisturizing on my eyes but I don't think it's really doing the job of concealing which is the main priority right now because it's a concealer we'll just use it to kind of highlight yeah, on this side where I put the aqua cushion, I'm definitely still seeing a whole lot of freckles on this side. The other side, you don't see them nearly as much, but this side, definitely you can see a lot of my freckles. So that's cute, actually, I don't mind that. Um, and knowing me, I'd probably put on more freckles anyway, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but. I'm waiting for this to like dry down <laughs> the concealer, and I don't think it's going to, so I guess I'm definitely gonna have to powder, which is unfortunate. I didn't wanna powder too much, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna say for both of these foundations right now, they both look as though they're not really sinking into my skin. Like they just, they just chill in on top. Like around my nose is getting a little bit icky. So it looks as though I actually am gonna have to powder. Um, I was hoping I wouldn't have to, but for the sake of giving these foundations a fair chance, I'm gonna go in. Now, this isn't particularly strange. I've had other foundations that I have to set. Um, I prefer that they like sink in because you see this really pretty finish. I'm gonna keep that. So I'm gonna take the tiniest amount of powder. Actually, now that everything's kind of settled and I've set this side, I actually like the matte side better than I thought. I actually prefer it to this side, actually, which is unexpected. Okay, I will still say that the concealer is lacking for me. I'm sure you can see this like cute under eye bag that's still just like, hey, what up everybody? I don't wanna cover it because I wanna like see how everything is going, but I think I'm going to because I'm actually filming something else after this and Put a little bit of Fenty concealer under it. This is in shade Caramel, just because I just I just need a little bit more in there. That's just like, there you go. And Fenty concealers aren't particularly super high coverage, so I feel like it'll keep with the whole like super natural looking vibe we're going for here. So much better, so much better. There we go, here's our foundation Delio. I'm going to go put on the rest of my makeup. It's not, it doesn't plan to be anything super crazy, but you know, things change. We'll see how everything goes. And I'll meet you back when the beat is all done. Okay, here we are back at it. This is what we're looking like. It's looking good so far, so thank God. Y'all, I was about to have a moment. I was like, I was rooting for you. I was rooting for both of y'all, but so far, we're okay. So it is almost eight o'clock. Filming other things today, as well as just doing stuff around my house for a few hours. And when my day is done, I'll come check back at you guys, give you guys my final thoughts. What are my yays? What are my nays? And you can see if you wanna get your hands on these products. Hello, beautiful people of the internet. It is currently, I have hella notifications. <laughs> it is currently 12, 11 midnight, and I'm exhausted. I would love to wear this a little longer to give you guys even a more in-depth review but your girl needs to sleep. Actually, I won't be able to sleep. I gotta edit a bunch of stuff, but I'm ready to take this off, at least. If you guys can see, my skin is still looking really, really good. Granted, it's only been, what, four hours, so. And I also haven't been in any, like, very environmentally extreme situations. I've been indoors, <laughs> um, editing, cooking a little bit. Surprisingly, I've come to more and more like the matte side than I was expecting I would. I thought y'all saw me in the beginning. I was very, very concerned about this foundation. I was rooting for it and I was about to be so heartbroken if it didn't work on me. But I've been doing very little research in the time that I've been away and I think the issue here was the use of hyaluronic acid. I used a hyaluronic acid serum prior to putting on foundation at first and then the second time I did not use that serum and I found that it went on very, very well. So if you do use hyaluronic acid serums, um, don't. <laughs> is what I'm getting at. I haven't found prior to this that that was ever an issue. I didn't really have that issue with my Fenty foundation, which is also kind of matte. I didn't have that problem with um, my Milani Conceal and Cover, Conceal and Perfect. The two-in-one, whatever, that's also quite matte. I didn't really have that problem, but apparently this foundation does not take well to hyaluronic acid. So keep that in mind if you use a moisturizer or something like that that has hyaluronic acid in it. Um, overall as well, I would say avoid any super balmy moisturizers prior to putting this on. That in some way disturbs the foundation. I don't know why it does that, but Basically, I would say if you have dry skin like me, keep it simple. <laughs> Don't do too much with your skincare or you're gonna just budge the foundation. But if you keep it simple and keep it pretty thin, um, it wears beautifully. I like the Aqua Fit. I feel like it's really nice. It wore quite well. However, it is super natural, which might be a good or a bad thing. For me, it's a little pointless. <laughs> it feels like a very pointless $25 on this side, you know? Because it is so natural, it doesn't really cover up much. I guess it does overall, even the color and tone of my skin, but it doesn't really cover much. Um, so I kind of feel like I could have just gotten a different form of foundation to 
do that like a tinted moisturizer comes with more in it and it would probably cost about the same so I like it um, but I can it's kind of meh I don't really feel too super attached to it but it is pretty I would say if you're choosing between one or the other like Kendall should I get the matte one should I get the aqua fit I'd say get the matte one it has the coverage it has a nice finish it's not super matte for those of you that are dry but it's also has a nice satin finish for those of you that are oily and want something that'll mattify a little bit. Both sides I found needed to be powdered, but that could also be because I am quite diligent with my skincare. Even though I did a lot thinner, I still did it, and that might be a result of that. You don't understand, I didn't wanna let you guys down, and I know that you guys are really excited about this, and I'm just happy to say that everything's good. We're good. I must say this color is really good. It's really, really nice. I would say one con, which is basically not just for this brand, but for all brands, is that it could go deeper. It definitely could go deeper, but I'm not gonna knock it too much on that because this is a Korean brand, like I said, and this is this is this is a lot. This is I'm asking for a lot, so I'll give it a few, maybe another year or so to come out with like some legitimately dark shades. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock them too much because they are breaking new ground and like making new foundations and stuff. But at some point I would expect a even deeper shade range. If I'm your second to darkest shade, and this isn't just for Innisfree, this is basically for all drugstore foundations. This is kind of my safety rule. I can be second to last shade, which is just stupid. <laughs> Cause your girl's not that dark so like I should not be the darkest color you have I am very much so just like tan <laughs> like I should I should be like smack dab in the middle between the matte and the aqua the aqua definitely applies easier um, so if you're in a rush and you just want to throw something on I would definitely recommend the aqua the matte one takes a little bit more like diligence because you want that coverage to build up but overall I prefer the finish of the matte one to the aqua so if I had to give these guys a score from a one to five I would give the matte a good four I would give the aqua a three I mean simply because I don't find it that necessary I <laughs> it's pretty again but it's kind of bleh, kind of bleh it doesn't really cover anything it didn't even cover like freckles it didn't cover acne scars it didn't cover much of anything but it did kind of just even out and give me a nice little glow over here if you saw my skin in the beginning of this video I don't have necessarily bad skin but I still find this pointless <laughs> like a little a little pointless as for the concealer though hard pass this is the probably the worst concealer I've ever used I think the thing about it is it does say that it is matte and full coverage like it's supposed to be the full cover of it's supposed to be the concealer version of this yeah so I'm expecting it to be like up there and this is quite greasy I guess moisturizing but it doesn't cover like <laughs> it doesn't cover anything so if this is the only concealer that I can use from the range I would just skip concealer altogether and I would just buy like a lighter version of these cushion foundations particularly the matte one maybe this would be okay used as a tinted moisturizer but Again, it's marketed as a concealer, so I expect coverage and I didn't get that coverage, so. I forgot to say in the beginning of the video, but each of these uh, compacts are 0.49 fluid ounces or 14 grams. That's about half of what you can expect in your standard bottle of foundation. Bottle foundations tend to be about an ounce, give or take. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's half of the amount of product you should expect from like a bottle foundation. That doesn't bother me so much depending on how far these go. So I found that the matte one definitely does go quite far. You don't need a lot of the product. I did find that Aqua, I was trying to build it up so much that I was using a lot of product and this one is also quite liquidy. Um, so you tend to use more. If you found this video at all helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If there's any other products that you want me to try out, particularly in K-Beauty, don't forget to recommend them down in the comment section on my Instagram or on Twitter. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.